Dubliners, a 1914 collection of short stories by James Joyce, is organized in a way that mirrors the progression through life's stages. Joyce's construction of Irish identity in his early works, such as Dubliners, stems from his exploration of identity in a universal sense. In The Sisters, a young boy learns of the death of Father Flynn, a priest he's befriended. Neighbors comment on the priest's odd behavior, but the boy is both grieved and curious in response to Father Flynn's death. He and his aunt visit Father Flynn's sisters, who now wonder what they will do without the responsibility of caring for their brother. In An Encounter, an adventure-obsessed narrator and his friend Mahani skip school to explore Dublin. The day goes well for them until they encounter an old man in a field near the edge of the city. The creepy old man's repetitive talk about sweethearts and corporal punishment quickly makes the boys uneasy. In Araby, a boy suffers from an all-consuming crush on a neighborhood girl. He's afraid to talk to her, but thinks about her constantly. She asks if he's going to a bazaar called Araby, and the boy promises uh -huh. to bring back a gift. After a series of delays, he gets to the bazaar as it's closing, and realizes that impressing the girl is a hopeless cause. In Eveline, a young woman named Eveline lives alone with her abusive father after her mother dies and her brothers are gone. She becomes romantically involved with a man named Frank, Frank wants Eveline to elope with him to Buenos Aires, but Eveline has second thoughts at the last minute. In After the Race, a young man named Jimmy becomes part of a group of international acquaintances who are wealthy on a much larger scale than he is. He loses a large sum of money in a card game with them and realizes he may be out of his league. In Two Gallants, two men, lacking steady work, spend their days drinking and looking for easy access to women. One reveals a plan to have his current girl <laughs> steal from her employer for him. The other wonders if he might prefer to settle down. In The Boarding House, a man in his 30s named Bob Doran has an affair with Polly, the much younger daughter of his landlady, Mrs. Mooney. Fearing he might lose his job and destroy Polly's reputation if word gets out, Mr. Doran reluctantly caves <laughs> to Mrs. Mooney's pressure to marry Polly. In A Little Cloud, Little Chandler questions his life choices, including a good job, a wife, and a child, when he reunites with his old friend Gallagher, who's become a reporter in London. When he gets home, Chandler comes to feel remorse for resenting his own family. In Counterparts, after a particularly bad day, Farrington goes on a pub crawl with his friends, but becomes more irritable as the night wears on, culminating in his defeat in an arm wrestling match. When Farrington goes home, he beats his son because dinner is not waiting for him and the kitchen fire is out. In Clay, a laundry worker named Maria attends a Halloween party at the home of a man she nursed as a child. A bad omen emerges when Maria draws a lump of clay associated with death Ooh. in a party game. In a painful case, Mr. Duffy, a bachelor, forms a close friendship with a married woman, Mrs. Sinico. When Mrs. Sinico indicates she wants more than Mr. Duffy as a friend, their relationship ends. Four years later, Mr. Duffy reads a newspaper article reporting that Mrs. Sinico has been hit and killed by a train. He learns of her decline into alcoholism and feels guilty for ending their association and condemning her to a life of crushing loneliness. In Ivy Day in the committee room, workers on a city campaign gather at the end of the workday to share stories of canvassing and their opinions about their candidate's position on nationalist issues. A poem about Charles Parnell, an advocate for Irish home rule, brings them together in respect for the man's memory. In A Mother, Mrs. Kearney makes arrangements for her daughter to perform as an accompanist in a four-concert series sponsored by a nationalist arts society. Mrs. Kearney demands the society pay her daughter when the concerts get canceled. Her insistence on payments and her argument with the society's secretary ends her daughter's musical career. In Grace, Tom Kernan's heavy drinking causes him to fall down some stairs in a pub and hurt himself badly. His friends arrange to go to a church service together in the hope that the power of God will stop Mr. Kernan from drinking. And in The Dead, Gabriel Conroy attends his aunt's annual Christmas ball with his wife. Various events there make him nervous about a speech he is to give at dinner, but the speech goes well. Afterward, when he and his wife are in their hotel room, he discovers his wife had a sweetheart who died before she met Gabriel. Gabriel questions his own mortality and sense of worth. A few important symbols run through the collection. Food 
is a typical symbol in literature that reinforces bonds between people. Sharing meals is a way of strengthening social bonds. In an encounter, the narrator and Mahani share currant buns, chocolate, biscuits, and lemonade. A dinner scene in After the Race provides an opportunity for a group of young men to converse and form closer friendships. Much of the social connection in The Dead centers around a dinner party that could, but often fails, to bring friends and family together. Food and meals also inspire longing. In Two Gallants, a dissolute con man contemplates the value of a more stable and genuine connection with other people as he eats a solitary and sad meal, a plate of peas in a lonely cafe. In a painful case, Mr. Duffy is eating a similarly lonely meal, corned beef and cabbage for one, as he learns of the death of his estranged friend, Mrs. Sinico, while reading a newspaper. For Maria in Clay, food is both a means of showing affection to the people she cares about and a source of longing and connection. She takes great care to purchase cakes to take to a hollow eve party hosted by the grown-up boy she nursed as a child. She goes to one bakery to get penny cakes, but decides to bring something really nice and goes to a second bakery and gets a slice of plum cake. She wants to make her friends happy with her gifts, but she also wants to bring them something of value, so she will be valued in return. Alcohol is another symbol that can represent an occasion for forming social bonds. In The Sisters, Nanny and Eliza Flynn offer Sherry to the narrator and his aunt, providing a physical means for them to share their grief about Father Flynn's passing. Alcohol lubricates the relationships formed between Jimmy and his European and American acquaintances in After the Race. In Grace, the world of the pub has provided Tom Kernan with a group of loyal friends who are willing to quit drinking themselves in order to help their friend abandon the bottle. In The Dead, a pivotal moment occurs when Gabriel gives a toast at a party. But drinking can also be deeply destructive. In Araby, the young narrator misses the better part of the bazaar because he's waiting for his uncle to come home from the pub, which crushes the narrator's dreams by causing him to miss the bazaar. Farrington's heavy drinking and counterparts leads him to beat his children, and Tom Kernan's drunkenness and grace causes him to injure himself badly. The symbol of weather conditions reflects the mood of events in each story or the mindsets of the characters. The narrator in The Sisters finds himself feeling incongruously free and happy on a sunny morning, even though he's learned his friend Father Flynn has just died. A hot sunny day in An Encounter, reflecting the joyous freedom the boys feel at the start of their day, actually gets hotter, and this freedom begins to feel like a burden. Two Gallants takes place on an overcast evening in August, mixing the warm, mild air that grants freedom with the clouds reflecting, or thinking about life's course. The Dead ends with a snowstorm, reflecting the chill Gabriel Conroy feels as he contemplates mortality and represents how Gabriel's own sense of self is obscured by his thoughts. The themes in Dubliners are both powerfully universal and, true to James Joyce's writing, a product of the complicated history of his country in its time. Religion is one such theme. The Catholic Church looms over the lives of the Dubliners. In some stories, religious faith is explicit, but in others, religious elements appear in more subtle ways. And even more subtle are the ways religious beliefs inform the morality that dictates daily life. Attitudes about sexual behavior are particularly rigid, based on the church's prohibition of premarital sex. Many of the characters struggle deeply with their own Catholic guilt, the tensions between religious factions of Protestants and Catholics, and the social decision-making underscored by the context and confines of religion in Ireland. The search for the theme of identity troubles every main character in Dubliners, as each of them struggles to navigate between personal desires, society's expectations, and relationships with others. The children of the first three stories struggle to find a place in the world that has absent parents, confusing and often threatening or hostile environments. Characters struggle with their ideas about their futures, their jobs, or their stations in life. The struggle with identity peaks in the final story with Gabriel Conroy of the Dead. He appears comfortable with his place in the world. He has gained stature and respect as a professor and writer, but a conversation with his wife after the party calls Gabriel's concept of his identity into question. While other characters come through their narratives with some new glimmer of knowledge about who they really are, Gabriel learns that the trappings of identity are largely an illusion. Economic class in Dublin is relatively static. For the most part, those who were born poor remain poor throughout their lives, and those who were born wealthy remain wealthy. Class differences also bring conflict. A few incidents of class mobility are present in Dubliners, but they never work out very well. 
For example, in After the Race, Jimmy loses a large amount of money in an attempt to keep up with his much richer friends in a card game. And in A Mother, Mrs. Kearney attempts to raise the family's reputation and social standing by getting involved in an art society and having her daughter play piano. Her attempts at climbing the social ladder fail. Her concern about money is vulgar to the upper classes. Escape is another theme. The rigid morality of Dublin society places constraints on everyone's behavior. The economy is similarly rigid, with few opportunities for anyone to advance out of the class into which they were born. These were factors that led Joyce himself to abandon Dublin for the European continent. Unable to physically escape from the city, other characters turned to different means of escape, like drinking, womanizing, or even going to church. Many of the social expectations and rules in Dublin stem from the moral codes espoused by the conformity of the church. Premarital or extramarital sex, for example, is frowned upon to the extent that it can be life-ruining if affairs are discovered, as evidenced in The Boarding House. Even the possible appearance of impropriety is enough to deter some relationships, as seen in Mr. Duffy's decision to end a friendship with a married woman in a painful case. In The Sisters, Father Flynn is part of the church, but his odd behavior casts him into the fringes of the neighborhood. Maria in Clay steadfastly sticks to her daily routine because it's what's expected of an unmarried woman her age. Dubliners is a defining 20th century work of literature that provides glimpses into the lives of some of the Irish city's residents and their anxieties, sufferings, and momentary joys, but also provides character sketches and themes that have universal appeal.